Yes, sculpturing classes, uh, that's what you can do here at City College. But I'm sitting here with Julie Rubio, and you're not sculpturing, right? You're not doing sculptures. No sculpturing, no. Just you, film. Um, just film. You are the brain, the director, the writer, and the producer behind, behind six sex scenes and a murder. Yeah, it's quite the mouthful. Six <laughs> sex scenes and a murder, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. That's your first feature, right? Yes, it's my first feature. Mm -hmm. I've made shorts, and I've worked on other people's features, mm -hmm. but this was my first feature. Um, it's about an hour and 54 minute feature, and um, it has, it's a multi-plot, it's a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, the name sounds very risque and kind of over the top, but it's really not. It's um, very, um, uh, it's, it's sexy and it's hot, but mm -hmm. it's um, also super smart. Super smart. And you have to really, it, you can either watch it for just enjoyment purposes and enjoy it, or you can watch it and it's got that whodunit. So Ooh. it's like that Agatha Christie where you kind of have to nice. figure out all these different layers. And so if you really take the time and watch it, it's something that you can watch several times. That, that's brilliant. That's very good for being a film. I always watch it and you're like, I'm so done. Yeah. <laughs> we have a little clip from the film that we're oh, going to take a little look at okay. right now. Great. Maybe you want to tell me what that clip is from. Um, I believe that this clip is um, when our character... Let's play. Remember what you said tonight about your fantasy? Which one? You know. What about it? I found the perfect guy to join us. Us. Mm -hmm. Meet Robert. You two know each other? Yeah, I know Robert. He was my sister Bridget's date for tonight. Uh, Tim's really good friend. Whoa, that's nice. So <laughs> tell me, tell me a little bit. What what was that? Um, that was our famous Greg Plitt, um, known as Robert in the film. Uh, Greg Plitt's on the uh, reality TV show Workout right now. So it's a Bravo television show, and he's super popular. Um, and he is coming in and somewhat trying to uh, seduce these two women and um, <laughs> had a little bit of back history with one of them. He had had dinner with her sister and her on a blind date earlier. And they're going to perhaps all hook up. But like, you know, love stories, they don't always, and like sex, it yeah. doesn't always work out. So, <laughs> um, always. yeah, so that's what that's about. You worked with a lot of actors from the Bay Area on this film. Yeah, we have a really great pool of talent up mm -hmm. here. And um, we did have to go down to Los Angeles, and that's actually where we got Greg Plitt. He'll come up for the opening on May 30th. Um, May 30th, yeah. We're having it um, at the Lemire, and it's playing for seven days. Um, but we do have really great talent up here. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really pleased to be able to work with SAG and be able to make this film in the Bay Area and not have to go down to Los Angeles in order to right. make this film. I mean, we have such a beautiful, amazing city. To not be able to utilize that within the film industry, it's, it's sad. It and, and it was a fantastic experience being able to cast. And we have 72, you know, actors. And 72 actors? That's, with, yeah, that's extras. extras. And, yeah, that's and, um, a lot of people. Yeah, and a lot of them were actually cast from up here. It was wonderful. I know you worked as an actress back in LA. Yeah. How did that help you to direct this movie? Or did it help you? It helped a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that I can relate to how heinous and horrible it can be to be an actor sometimes. I mean, you have to be on, you have to think, you have to, you're, you're sometimes treated like a prop, you know, you're <laughs> pushed over this way and pushed over that way and you have to deal with all these emotions instantaneously. I think it really helped to yeah. be able to kind of relate to where someone else is coming from. So you got the, you got the actors, you got the, the foundings, this uh, sex toy manufacturer guy? Oh no, yeah. actually he, um, <laughs> the entrepreneurs group, um, the young entrepreneurs, uh, I did meet Chandra Grados there who does have a um, mypleasure.com he owns. He introduced me to Rob Meadows and Rob Meadows is my investor and he actually owns Thrive which is a designer company and also a... Um, electronics, uh, basically people uh, pitch him different ideas yeah. and, and he likes to and help people out. He likes to help people out that he believes they're going to finish a product, polish a product and get it done. Was it sometimes you felt that you wanted to give up, that it was too hard, too much? 
What did um, you always I help? think you always have that little voice in your mind that tells you you can't do something. Yeah. And worse is when other people tell you you can't do something. So I think you really have to conquer that voice and tell it to shut up. Yeah. Constantly, all day long, and tell it no. But you I'm did. Not you go did there. finish it. You did. You you did that. And the opening is once again May 30. May 30th. It plays May 30th through the sixth at uh, the Lemire Theater in San Francisco. Awesome. And uh, the press will be watching it at the Dolby on um, Wednesday the 21st. So you guys should all come there and support Julie because it's an amazing film. It's oh, really, yeah. really great. And also support like independent upcoming artists, which is, I don't know if you heard about ATA, Artist yeah. Television Access, which is at Valencia, uh, Valencia and 21st Mission. Um, that is an amazing uh, art space where a lot of like even more independent filmmakers okay. can show their work That's and amazing. we're going to take a little look at more what ADA is really doing coming up. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. With ATA, it's not this sort of like hermetic art world enclave, what, which is what a lot of spaces are. You know, it's not this place where the same people come by and like the same ideas are just endlessly regurgitated. It's more of a place where just a huge diversity of people come in and are able to present their work. Me and Camila, this person right here, we used to organize for a year and a half open screen right here. Open screen is important because new filmmakers, I mean filmmakers who create short pieces like five to seven minutes or ten or twenty, they don't have any other chance to show the, show the piece. We try to scout great filmmakers to have a great show. So it was open screen, but still you had to be, you know, you, you had to be kind of in the theme of this month. You know, I've actually just become a filmmaker recently, and uh, really, yeah, there, I couldn't imagine where I would, you know, show something that I've made. Great we spot. Love ATA. Yeah. Been doing like the last whole crew of shows, the, the group of shows we've done here. We are a group of people that put on all ages shows um, in different parts of San Francisco and Oakland. If you don't have an underground scene, then everything in art is commodified and you're not getting like the, the people that nurture the new sounds and the new ideas and that, I don't know, promote new messages or like represent people, like real people and not products. Yeah, people are here because they want to support the community and hear live music and it's a different energy, it's a lot more fun. Have you played at AP before? No. 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 We didn't know it existed until recently, but it's it's an awesome place. We've spent a lot of time in this area, but never played here. Yeah, be, didn't even know it existed, but it's a really good spot. If there weren't places like ATA, and there are others for art and music, and a few for film in town, um, you know, people like me and people like you just wouldn't, it would be tough for us to get our work to show, you know? Like, Welcome back to IDTV. I'm Courtney Venus. And I am Camilla Stenmark. As you can see, Camilla and I are now standing in a lovely backyard. In our little garden here. Yes. <laughs> Courtney, did you know that some food or most of food is traveling about 1,500 miles to end up at your table? That's gross. I knew that yeah. the numbers, I didn't know the numbers. I knew it was bad. I knew that a lot of food's processed, yeah. but that's just gross. It's disgusting. You should keep it local. Yeah. In fact, we're going to watch a clip of two individuals that kept it local. 